Hi guys, today I will review this state-of-the-art high-performance product by SteelSeries, the Apex Pro TKL. Let's go! So guys, as I said already, today we will review, or I will review for you this um, Apex Pro TKL keyboard, which is basically um, as they mentioned or said or they said the world's best-selling TKL keyboard. Um, I don't know from when this statement is, but um, let's first start with the facts. This is in TKL size keyboard means the num block is missing. You have those arrow keys still there and those functional keys like end, page up, page down, home and all the stuff. And you have um, the whole F row above the yeah, above the normal Kurtz part of the keyboard. In Germany it's Kurtz, for example. You can basically order in English, France, German, Japanese, Nordish and Great Britain English uh, key setups. It's like TKL compared to, I just compared for you guys, give you a brief overview. Um, you all know full-size keyboards. Um, I show you now in 65 and 60%. This is 65%. You still have the arrow keys over there and some functional keys. And this is a 60% keyboards without uh, um, arrow and functional keys, but on both you can see it's also missing the F um, row, so the functional key row is not there anymore. And basically, this is what I understand on the high performance gaming keyboards. For me, TKL is something in between. It's like you want it to go all in, but you are not sure. It's like you really want this hot girl, but the friend or the girlfriend of the really hot one is also okay, but it's not the hot one and it's easier to get her. That's like you do it like this, you know? Guys, go for the hot one. 65, 60%. If you have one time, just uh, you will, one time you have a really, really good 60%, like a ducking mesha mini, like the Huntsman uh, mini. If you have a mini keyboard laying down there, which is really, really satisfying, really good, you will never go back to TKL, believe me. Maybe to 65 at some point, if it's a really good one. You can adopt, believe me. But with TKL, I already uh, tried. I played this on Apex uh, with a 50 by 50 pad and with this desk mat where it's laying on right now. The problem with TKL is I always touch the, the keyboard with my mouse. There is, for me, there is uh, no position of my arms, which I feel, or body or hands or whatever, where I feel comfortable um, of using this TKL keyboard without touching the um, keyboard with my mouse. So that's for the size right now. And as I mentioned already, some on the other keyboard reviewers, we're only re uh, reviewing pre-builds here, no custom keyboards, and that's one, as I say, one of the best-selling TKL full pre-built keyboards. Um, a lot of people mentioned it to me that I should test it on Twitter, on YouTube, and on my stream. And some of my viewers also had that and were, as much as I understood, they were satisfied with this. It's a full profile, not a um, low profile keyboard. Um, let's compare it, for example. Um, that's uh, the 365, um, which is, um, oh, <laughs> set the keycap wrong, um, which is basically a, a, a low profile. Um, I just show you, just that you can see. That's the Apex Pro TKL and that's the low profile keyboard here. And I think you can see the difference in height is a lot. And um, one reason why I try to find keyboards, also full size keyboard, where the height is not that high, also to find the best performance or aiming performing low profile keyboards is that the ergonomic and playability of a low profile or on a full profile keyboard, which is set up very low, is way, way, way better because of the positioning of your hand, of your wrist, and on the static, um, the, yeah, the, the muscular um, problems you can get if your hand is resting here with a high arch in a static position for a long time. Because when the blood flow gets interrupted and the signaling to your hands and your um, fingertips is getting worse just by the small muscles in between the carpal tunnel, which is like your, the carpal tunnel gets uh, more tight and at some points you are uh, lacking of um, blood in the hand and um, you can 
you just lose the feeling in your hand on a long play run and that's um, sometimes what some people give them pain in the Kapal tunnel when they played for longer time for weeks and months and whatever. I had this problem too with um, some mouse and um, I just needed to switch the mouse uh, a little bit on the, the grip type and uh, also I wear a medical compress now from Bauerfeind about this on my uh, mouse arm. So I just wanted to avoid it also on my keyboard arm. That's why I started to try out low profiles. They're very enjoyable, but for here um, there's no profile option. There's just a full size option, um, a full profile. And the price here is just my imagine what I felt you you get the box, the box is always very nice, it's the series. You get a box, yeah? It's cool, nice box, like always a lot of information, a lot of claims. Um, the switch is explained on the back side, you have those data up here, what's about the size and all the stuff. And they say it's crafted out of aluminium, which is basically, you get it out, you are pre-impressed by the pricing and think now there is a banger in the box. But you just get it out. The first thing is when you have it, like there's this this cable from your vacuum cleaner they put into your keyboard. That's um, I don't know. I try to uh, I try to call Dyson, but I got no one there. I want to ask Dyson if they sent this cable to Steel Series because they have no cable anymore. I have no clue. It's so thick, guys. It's basically just by the the, the size or how thick it is. It's basically very close to my 1600 watt PSU cable I'm using and it's the same size of the BenQ Sovi cable for power I'm using. Why it is? Because it has two USB connectors inside, two. One for the keyboard itself for function, one for this key, the USB extension here. Why do I need this USB extension? For wireless mouse or what? what, what is the reason? I don't get it, I don't need it, and I don't want it. And the other thing is, I can't even switch the cable on the back side when I don't fucking want to. Why? Use, make USB port there, it's over 200 euro for this keyboard. Another thing is, they say it's aerospace aluminium, it's aircraft grade aluminium alloy frame. I think some companies have different specifications on what the frame is. A frame, for me, when I think of a car, is everything around. It's just the frame, you know? It's the bare bone, the bone. And they have the picture of it, of the frame here. Like, oh, where is it? May I find it? Here, like, that's the frame. But this picture is misleading. You want to know why? Because for me here, it looks like everything is aluminium. Even the, the, the down here, the bottom. But the bottom, that's not aluminium guys, that's plastic, it's, can't, if this is aluminium man, I have no clue, it's, I'm 100% I'm sure, just also by gripping, like how it feels, that's never aluminium, that's a plastic bag, and here they making advertisement for the sweet way you can, um, you can uh, route your cable to it. Guys, I don't want this fucking cable. I want a thin one, a good one. I want Paracord style USB-C type cable on a 210 euro product. So, which brings me to another point. You get it out of the box. Okay, you're already disappointed just by the thick cable. You're disappointed by this non-aluminium frame keyboard. It's basically only an aluminium, a, a, a brushed aluminium top. Um, space, how can I say it? It's just topped, yeah. Just the top plate is aluminium, brushed aluminium. Then you start using these, because of the height, you have this wrist, this, um, this hand rest, the wrist rest delivered with it. And it's magnetical, that's cool. So it, it just clips here, but it's always moves. It's like I'm not doing it that much here, that's not much force. It's always moving. You have your hand on it and you slide a little bit, it begins to moving. So, and one thing is, okay, this is here, the, the, it's aluminium. And um, when I buy a uh, wrist rest for like 20, 30 euro, I get really high quality stuff, guys. There are insane products out there for 30, 40 euro. And there are also tons of them. And here, Steel Series sent you something with a 210 euro product. 
which sounds like the worst plastic you find in your dacha. That's, guys, that's not, that's a 200 euro product. How can there be this, this product inside? Okay, it's okay, I accept this. It's not, I, I'm not mad about this, but I'm a little bit disappointed. Let's go to the next point here. It's like, we are still on the outside, guys, not even on the inside. We go to the keycaps. Remember, remember? 210 euro buy-in. When you buy a ducky keyboard for 80 euro in Germany, you get a very high quality MX Sherry Red switch, it's not silent. But one thing you would definitely get is, uh, let me check which button I have here, it's escape. What you definitely get is, this is Steel Series, this is Ducky, and I think most of you already know what I, what I want to talk about or what I want to say. This is ABS plastic and this is double shot PVT. ABS plastic on a 210 euro product which basically is soft plastic, which is very influential by usage. Um, it downgrades or it, it down uses a lot and fast. It's very, it's, it's accepts and it's open and uh, has problems with, uh, for example, oily liquids, with sweat, with anything which is on a liquid base will go into the plastic and will influence the, the, how the plastic is looking. And as I said, it's down uses very fast. I have no idea why they choose this, to be honest. I think on a 210 euro product, there should be double shot PBT K caps. Not gonna lie, cause that's a standard for me right now. Um, I know there is another keyboard here, like which is 130 euro, the Fnatic Streak. It also has only ABS plastic. I have no clue why they have ABS plastic here. I think double shot should be the standard right now. Um, one thing they've done, which, which is good for ABS, is that they did not print on, for example, the, the different signs in the different languages, you know? It's like when you have a Norwegian or a Norsk standard or a Great Britain standard, those um, informations here on the, on the keycaps are different and they did not print it on, they just uh, lasered it into, that's very good. So they will not disappear when you use it a lot. But it's still ABS plastic. Mm, one thing is um, they have a very informative uh, display here over there um, where I already set something. You can set different lots here. I, I can show it maybe. Now if it's this, it shows these series. You can change whatever you want. You can also make a GIF. And now it's like only for um, the volume adjustment. And when you enable it to the uh, mode, it switches. And basically you can um, change a lot of uh, settings there uh, without using the software, so without tapping out, for example. Um, one thing you can do here is influence the actuation. Why or what is the reason to influence actuation here? Basically, this is one unique selling point on this product. There are these so-called omni-point switches in there, which are basically mechanical switches with a an, an sensor on an electromagnetic or on an electric base. They have pictured it on the back side there. Um, you see on the bottom there is a sensor, on the top it shows like they're coming out a signal out of the plastic, but basically there is just like an, um, yeah, like an, not a receiver, but something which is, um, gets uh, known or which um, the sensor sends in, not a signal, but in like an, an, an field to it and by just by measurement of the field and um, by the uh, data which is the, the sensor is preset, it can say how far the um, the actuation is away from the sensor and that's why you can switch it omni point where you have 10 settings which are from 0.4 millimeter to 3.6 millimeter in three settings but one problem is for me when i'm i want the switch which is linear which just has characters of a silver switch for me to be honest not of a red one when i want this and I buy this because of the omni point setting because I want to set it on a very special point because I want to hire the ability or the, the, the speed of my input on my keyboard. Why it is set in steps and not in millimeter? I want to know the millimeter, not the steps. I don't know um, if the steps on five and six are different than on one and two. I just want millimeters 
have there as information, not steps. So that's mis very misleading for me, to be honest, and I don't like it a lot. That's very, I don't know. Also here, they have a claimation on the backside. It's like 100% anti-ghosting, 84 key rollover. Guys, 84 key rollover is when you smash your head on the keyboard or you smash the keyboard against the desk or the wall. There's, I think there's no point you will be able to pass six or eight key rollover because you will be not be fast enough to use one of your fingers in below 25 milliseconds to press another key. That's the first point. And even if you're, if you're typing, if you're a typist and you type very fast, the speed, the switches have mechanicals and opticals and also these ones, these, opt um, these basically Omni point mechanics, they call it, so the magnetic mechanicals are basically, so the Hall effect switches are basically so fast, even if you're the fastest typist on the world, you will not be able to be there in below 10 milliseconds pressing more than six buttons, uh, six keys. There's no way to do it. So this claim is just, yeah, it's just in Germany we're saying Augenwischerei. It's just an information which is basically useless just to let the product look better. Basically, there's a lot of stuff, again, um, which is just letting these products look good. OLED smart display in game, all that's Discord messages, current songs. You can watch it on this OLED display. That's cool. That's nice to have. But then you need to dis decide or uh, think about what is this keyboard now? Is this keyboard a very expensive consumer product for people who often like to play? But why they need omni point switches then? Why they don't go for just those normal linear reds, which are basically here on the on the F row and on the function key row? Because Steve Stevie's just made only the curves part here, so the normal um, input part with those omni point switches. And which brings me to another point. When I only make this, why I just don't make a 65 or 60% 60 keyboard for this with only Omni points? Maybe 65 with those arrows here and some use, you know, you still can do a display somewhere. I don't know, you surely can do. But why I don't do this then? Because people asking for 210 euro, why not all switches are the same? And they, I think they have the right to. I don't know. Also, the switches for gaming, not gonna lie, I tried them in um, step one, so 0.4 millimeters to step six, and um, the preset is step five, so in the middle, and most enjoyable for me was um, four, five, and six, to be honest, because um, on one, it was like, the, the actuation force here is like 45 gram, or centinewton, or whatever you wanna call it, and the thing is that it's just by the characteristic of the, the keys or the switch in general, it just you just have too many false presses. And I have I have uh, used it on six try and um, wrote the email to Steel Series because that's the first product I've ever reviewed. I definitely want to give back because there's no way I will give it someone. There's no way I will use it somewhere else, and there's no way I will use it or get it or take it to compare or comparison in another review. That's the first and the last time you will see this keyboard here on YouTube, on, on my channel and on my stream or wherever. I would really try to send it back, but it is not working. They are not allowing me to send it back right now. And I tried to write the email here and just by tipping, I typed again. I just tried to typing. The thing is that is, I don't know, the feeling of the um, keys in general is not good it's the response is bad it feels very weird it was very hard for me there was a lot of mistyping just some letters who were were not supposed to be there were in the text you know and it's just like there was a snow awesome feeling by typing with this keyboard so for me for for gaming um the there are maybe some people who need these omni point switches i don't know but for me Maybe I'm just not on the level, guys. Maybe you guys are on a higher level and I have no clue. For me, it's, there's no way I need it. Um, I used the last time these um, optical switches um, from the new Razer Huntsman Mini. They're nuts, to be honest. They're feeling way better. And also, they're too loud, to be honest. And 
when I say the feature that they are so fast, I mean, it's 0.7 milliseconds. And here they say reds are 6 milliseconds. New reds are 1 millisecond. 1.2, some are one, uh, 0 0.8. Normal mechanicals. So there's no exclusive point of selling or no unique selling point just by the speed of the switches. Maybe it is by the ability to change the actuation point on the fly. That's, that's for sure. But do you really need it? Will you change your actuation point every day by game? When you play Dota, it's something else than on, I don't know, League of Legends? I don't think so. Is it something else on Valorant than on Apex? I don't think so. So you will figure out some days what the actuation point is for you and then you realize, ah, it's the same actuation point I had on my last Kale switches or I had on my last Cherry switches as 1.6 millimeter. And that's also the reason why they make it in 10 steps. They just don't want to show you that you basically play the same way, distance, motion, actuation. So you will play 1.6 or 1.8 millimeter again like you've done on your kale box red switches. You will play it again. You want to know why? Because you've done it six months already. And it will be exactly the point, but they won't show you. They will show you number six or something like that or four or five or whatever. You know, that's the problem. It's like, like they always do, like they say, that's the super oh, blah 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 switches or super old eye sensor, which is basically a 33, 34, you know? And that's misleading. That's um, misleading in competition in general. That's for you as consumer misleading informations. I hope you understand this. That's like the steps are misleading because you would realize that you spend 210 euro on a keyboard, which is basically actuating at the same point like the keyboard you used before was too. And then you realized you could get a full, full metal keyboard from another company, which, is, which has a full metal body, which feels way better in general, which performs still very, very awesome, which is very fast, has very new switches, a lot of switch options. You could get for the half of the money. Why is this series doing this? I have no clue. For me, when I was younger, like from 2099 to 2005, I was playing Counter-Strike 1.6, half of mod and before, whatever. Steel series was the number one gaming brand for me. This was this, the, what the fucking brand with the most insane gaming, innovative gaming products, headsets, Siberia headsets, mouse, First laser optical mouse, better products than razor and mouse. General, everyone was so eager to have steel series product. It was so hard to get steel series in Germany. You have to order them over there in, in the north, and and then they just send it you, and you were not able to send it back. And some people traded steel series products online, all the stuff. Steel series was like was like god tier level. It was like was final mouse is now for the Americans. Was steel series for us here in Germany, and. All the last products I had from Steel Series were very, very disappointing. Um, I'm just this here is not a video to bash or to tell you how bad the product is, but there's no way you would get me to play this keyboard. That's why I want to send it back. There's no point. I will never. I will never need it again. Yeah, it's like the pricing is so awful. The product quality. I mean. The product quality is good, but the type how it's made, the plastic, the um, the keycaps, in general, like the whole manufacturing, just shows me or gives me the feeling that this series just won 210 euro from me and give me a product which basically is 34 euro in production. That's what I'm. I was feeling when I was using it, and. I don't know guys, if you compare it to the, to the competition and you really seek for something which is high performance level, go for Ducky, go for Razer, go for Keychron, go whatever guys, but don't go Apex Pro TKL, save your money, don't get disappointed. If you're still in love with C-Series, I can understand this, I was too, and I know there will be people here 
who will comment like, oh bro, you have no idea why you're bashing C-Series, it's still the best keyboard out there in the world. Maybe it is for you, but it's not for me. Because I'm able to order 80 euro keyboards somewhere else with KL box switches. And they are way better fabric than this one. And they still performing basically on the same level. So just by my own impressions, I can tell you that's the first and the last TKL I've ever reviewed here. There will be in future only 65 and 60% keyboards and only these high performance products, maybe from some major brands like Fnatic or I don't know when some other like Razer, like the Huntsman Mini. I will not again review in TKL because for me to perform on a high level, on a very high level, on a high ELO for example, or on to have real, real fun um, with my very expensive mouse, I need more space and these um, TKLs costs me the space and the feeling of real performance. It not feels like it will be able or, or it suits my or it suits what I, I'm seeking of, what I'm thinking of when I think about a high performance gaming mouse. So basically guys if you or if I lost or missed something, um, if there is something you think I'm totally wrong on with this keyboard, put it down in the comments. There's you can write everything, but I want to have consensus with you. I want to talk with you. I want to see your reactions to this video. This is not a bashing video. I was really, really still serious fanboy back in the days. Believe me, guys. I'm just very disappointed in this video, and I hope you can see it and understand it by what I'm saying to you, how I'm talking about this product. It's not about that the product is totally shit. It isn't. There will be people outside who will enjoy it, that's for sure. But for me, the price point is not fair. Um, the quality of production, the quality in general is good, but the production level of the plastic, of the ABS, of the, re of the rest, of the non-metallic um, bottom is not what I want to see for over 200 euro. That's the main reason why I'm disappointed and I think um, I know this keyboard is a little bit older now. I just reviewed it because a lot of you people wanted uh, that I review it. I don't know. It's not a waste of time in my opinion. Um, because it gives my um, my view and my understanding and knowledge of keyboards a better level, a better understand. I understand it better now. I have a more broad view because I know more products. That's for sure. I know. I now know or understand how an expensive product not should be, and that. Old companies which were made for gamers by gamers, which were performing very good a decade ago, are now only like about selling mainstream. And that's kind of disappointing for me. I hope Steel Series is coming back. I know no one is watching this video of these guys, but I wish for myself that Steel Series maybe gets back some enthusiast products. I have no clue if this happens, but yeah. So guys, if there's anything missing, put it down in the comments. Don't write shit like, huh, it's the best keyboard in the world. Guys, I don't care. If it is for you, I feel sad. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next video. Bye.